Hey, what's going on, Sam Rice? Welcome to today's video. I am Sam, and today I want to show you how to make a quick and simple animation inside of Final Cut Pro X using a Photoshop file. Now, for this demonstration, I'm going to assume that you already know how to create a Photoshop file, export a Photoshop file, and import it into Final Cut Pro X. But don't worry, if you don't know how to do that, make sure you subscribe to this channel because I will be coming out a video with a video on that very, very soon. Plus, I would love to have you as part of our familia. So for today's video, I already have our Photoshop document created. As you guys can see right here, it is three layers. We have this little um, square with the triangle, my contact information. P.S. Go follow me on Twitter for updates about everything we do on this channel. You can find me at Sam, S-A-M, Angelo, A-N-G-E-L-L-O on Twitter. We would love to have you there. Then I have this little tab with my name. So the animation is going to look something like this little square is going to slide on right here. And then we're going to have the contact information come out and then we're going to have my name pop up. Now the first thing we need to do is position this uh, element where we want it in the frame. So to do that, we're gonna go up to the transform tab, make sure we click on it so it's highlighted with yellow. We're gonna go to the transform tab and we're going to move the position. So we're going to maybe slide it over a little bit so the square's a little bit off frame and then drop it down so it's not so high up in the frame of our shot. All right, once that's done, we need to open up the Photoshop document so we can see all of the layers inside of Final Cut Pro X. To do that, just double click on the element. All right, Sam Rice, now we need to determine how long we want each element to be animated for. So how long do we want it to take for this square to move into position? Or how long do we want it to take for my name to move into position? Now, I typically find on small animated projects like this, anywhere between 15 frames and 30 frames is pretty much the sweet spot. For this project, we're going to use 30 frames. Okay, now let's set up our animation. So the first thing we're going to want to do is move our playhead to 30 frames. So the simplest way to do this is to make sure your playhead is all the way at the beginning of your timeline. Then use the arrow keys on your keyboard to move your playhead 30 frames. Now we can actually visually see how many frames we're moving by looking at the time code right here. So for those of you who don't know how to read time code, it is frames, seconds, minutes, hours. Okay, let's move our playhead 30 frames forward. All right, count with me. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. We are now at 30 frames. Now we're going to need to get to our blade tool. So we're going to click B and our blade tool will pop up and we're going to make a slice. Now these slices are for visual representation so we know where we're actually putting keyframes so we can hop back and forth between them while we're working on building the animation. Once you have your slice made, click A to get your selection tool back and click on that new slice, making sure that you have selected the layer that you are currently working on animating. So we are working on animating the square. So as you can see, I clicked on it and I had this yellow box showing that I've selected that layer to be able to animate. Now it's time to put our first keyframe in. So we're gonna go up here to where it says transform, position, and we're going to click on the keyframe. Now we're working backwards here. So this is our end keyframe. This is where we want our element to end up. This is our last position. So we can see that our keyframe was successful. It turned yellow. Now let's go put our first keyframe in. So this is where our element is going to start. So what we're gonna do is drag our playhead all the way to the beginning. And now we can move our position. So say I wanna start it maybe over here and down like so. Now, if you noticed, it automatically put that keyframe in for me. I didn't have to click it because I already put in the other keyframe. So Final Cut's like, oh, he's doing keyframe animation. We're just going to give him that keyframe. So you're all good. Just check to make sure that the keyframe, of course, uh, took. So now when I scrub forward, we can see that that little square now slides into position. All right, now it's time to animate our contact information. So the first thing we're going to do is get our blade tool again 
and we're going to go right to that 30 frame mark and we're going to make another slice. Now, the reason we're doing this is this part here, we don't want to see. Now, we could delete that. I'm not a big fan of deleting it. I rather drop the opacity. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on the little cut we just made and we're going to go make sure it's selected. So make sure we see that yellow frame and we're going to drop its opacity. So we're just going to go boop like that. So now when we put our playhead over it, we can see it's no longer on screen. All right, now it's time to make our contact information slide out. So we need to count 30 frames forward from that position. So we're just going to do the exact same thing we did again, use our arrow keys and count 30 frames forward. So we're gonna go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. So we are now 30 frames forward. Again, same process, get our blade tool again, make our slice, switch to our arrow tool, make sure it's selected, put in our first keyframe just like this, drag our playhead back to the 30 keyframe mark since that's where this animation is going to start from, and then move our position. So we're gonna move our contact information just so the two little points match up there. We'll see that it automatically put our keyframe in again, and now when we slide forward, we see that our contact information slides out. And then again, we're going to repeat the process one more time. So blade tool, slice, selection tool, select the Sam Angelo, drop the opacity so we can't see it during the animation. So we'll see right there, can't see it. Come back to that uh, 60 keyframe marker, or one second, I should say. And we're gonna move another 30 forward. So we're just gonna count out 30 again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. So we're on 30. Get our blade tool back. Make our slice again. So make sure you select it. And then make sure you put it in your keyframe. Then again, we're gonna move all the way back to the starting point move our Sam Angelo down to where we want it to start. And now we should see when we move, it slides up. All right, so there it is. There is our whole animation. As you can see, it works perfectly. So we're gonna go back to our uh, actual project. So we're just gonna close the Photoshop layers, just like so, by clicking the little plus icon. So now when I click the go full screen and click play, you will see our animation works one, two, three. All right, guys, so I hope you can see it's very easy to do a quick and simple animation inside of Final Cut Pro. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions about anything I did, make sure to ask them in the comment section below. If you like today's video and you want to see more content just like this, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up. And until next time, remember to dream big, think bigger, and always be you. I love you guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.